Hey there, my amazing viewers. Welcome back to Military X-Force. I've got a truly incredible and inspiring story to share with you today. We're diving into the annals of history to uncover the gripping tale of the man who led tanks up Omaha Beach. Get ready to be amazed, educated, and inspired by the sheer courage and determination that unfolded on that fateful day. But before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our captivating historical content. Now, without further ado, let's roll. It's June 6th, 1944. D-Day. The landing craft sways back and forth in the heavy waves. First Lieutenant Jimmy W. Monteith of the 16th Infantry Regiment, 1st Infantry Division, hangs on for dear life. Ahead are the white sands of Omaha Beach, watched over by fortresses of concrete and steel. Explosions fill the air, the incessant pounding of artillery, but a taste of what they're going to face. The beach comes ever closer and rains through the air. It starts clattering against the steel of the craft, but it's not water, but a rain of German lead. The men aboard are terrified. They clutch their rifles, facing down the barrel of what from here seems like an insurmountable foe. Monteith doesn't know it but he's about to perform a feat that will compel the legendary generals Dwight D. Eisenhower and Omar Bradley to advocate him for the nation's highest honor. The doors fall, and Monteith leaves the charge off the boat. They fall into waist-deep water, desperately wading their way through as machine gun fire splashes all around them and strikes a few unfortunate souls. Monteith doesn't look back. He knows he can't. He reaches dry land and runs, shouting for his men to follow. Run. Explosions rock the beach, prearranged artillery striking up and down the sands, tearing through the men. He runs at 200 yards of carnage, followed by over a hundred men. But he's lucky and makes it unharmed. Ahead they face a web of barbed wire, layered in plain view of deadly pillboxes. He identifies the best spot to blow it open and orders a couple of his men armed with Bangalore mines to follow. They climb and crawl through the sand, hiding behind a meager cover of undergrowth and the barbed wire itself. Machine gun fire rips above their heads as they connect the tubes together and shove it through the barbed wire. They return to the embankment and detonate it, clearing a nine-foot gash into the wire. Monteith leaps out of cover, leading the charge through heavy fire. They run through the barbed wire and stop at the foot of their next massive hurdle. Two minefields block their path. Fortunately, their vicinity to the emplacements have made them harder to spot, and the machine gun nests focus their fire on the poor souls still disembarking and running through the sands. Hurrying not to let the relatives safely to go to waste, the soldiers once again prepare long stretches of Bangalore mines and slide them into the minefield. They lie down for cover, and a mine blows a path through. They run across, reaching the second minefield, and repeat the process. They're placing the mines when suddenly machine gun fire tears through the gathered men. They scatter for cover, and the combat engineers hurriedly detonate the mines. Monteith runs through the minefield, followed by some of his men. They huddle against the rocky embankment lining the beach taking cover from this surprise pillbox, overlooking their vector of attack. He analyzes the situation. That pillbox must go, and fast. He looks back at the beach, and spots two Sherman tanks in the sand. German machine gun tracer is ricocheting off their armor. Monteith tells his men to stay put, and fearlessly he charges out of cover, runs back across the beach amidst the hellfire running through the obstacles, racing through the killing fields until he reaches the two Shermans. He takes cover beside them and bangs on the armor with his rifle. The commander inside cracks open the hatch and shouts, questioning him. What the hell he wants? Monteith tells him that a pillbox is keeping his advance pinned, and he needs the Shermans to follow him to take it out. The crew agree, and he runs back up the beach. He takes cover on the embankment, waving at the tanks to follow. Guiding them through slowly but surely, he braves the air thick with German lead, signaling the machines by hand, through the barbed wire, and across the treacherous minefields. Finally the pillbox comes into view, 
Monteith runs for the Shermans and shouts its position to the men inside before a volley of gunfire pings off their armor. He hastily takes cover behind the Shermans as they take aim and open fire. The pillbox is silenced with a brutal strike of 75 mm shells of high explosive. Satisfied, Monteith and his men charge up the rocks and storm the German trench works. They find little resistance within, as the Germans are still focused on the beach. Using the trenches against the enemy, they burst into nearby bunkers and pillboxes and catch the crews by complete surprise. Germans in the neighboring sectors realize they have a breach and hastily rush to stop it as Monteith and his men take cover against the French hedgerows. Mobile machine gun crews take positions across the field ahead and to either take cover or to take cover. They are on either side of Monteith. They are swiftly surrounded and the German commander shouts at them to surrender. Monteith ignores him. In response to their silence, the Germans open fire. The air is filled with the cracks of bullets flying overhead, but Monteith is unshaken. He decides the German machine guns across the field are the lesser threat, as the tall hedgerow thick with rocks and roots provides ample cover. The ones on their flanks are the biggest concern. He orders his men to stay put and cover him as he fits a rifle grenade to the end of his weapon's barrel. He leaps into action, and his men open fire behind him. Keeping along the hedgerow, he spots the muzzle flasher and MG-42 firing away amongst the greenery. He approaches, undetected, aims his rifle and pulls the trigger. Monteith's aim is deadly, and the position explodes in a cloud of dirt and shrapnel, forever silenced. He returns quietly, triumphant, and orders his men to repeat the strategy against the machine gun on the left flank. They open fire, and once again he leaps, but this time it's to an open field. He's unfazed, charging with determination. He reaches a suitable firing spot, but he's lost track of the enemy. He fires where he thinks they are, but he's mistaken. He reloads behind cover. He waits for something to reveal their position, but they simply aren't firing. With astonishing bravery, he purposely draws their fire. The machine gun fires at him, riddling the dirt with bullets. Fortunately, the meager cover proves sufficient, and now he's seen their position. He repositions himself and takes another shot. The melody of the German machine gun comes to an end with a bang. Monteith turns around and runs back for his men, braving the open field a second time. The beat of the brave heart of Virginia is brought to a tragic end in the green fields of France. Jimmy W. Monteith now rests in the American cemetery in Normandy, a fallen hero among many. His cross is emblazoned with a golden star and the inscription Medal of Honor. The medal would be delivered to his mother during a simple ceremony in her home. She placed it next to a picture of Jimmy she kept on her mantle. And there you have it, the awe-inspiring story of the man who led tanks up Omaha Beach. It's a testament to the power of leadership, resilience, and the human spirit in the face of adversity. I hope this incredible story has left you as inspired as it left me. If you enjoyed this video and want more riveting tales from history, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Stay curious, stay amazed, and I'll see you in the next video.